All right, you guys, we're back and we're live in person. Hello. Yay, it's behind the bikini. Touch we, we can touch yeah. each other. Like, oh my we don't God, have that's... a split screen here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. This is, it's, it's, we get to do this, what? I don't know. Once every couple of months? Yeah. Which is nice, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. what's up? We are here in Pittsburgh wrapping up North Americans. So, Masters World is today. North Americans finished yesterday. Um, you're here in Pittsburgh until Tuesday or Wednesday. I go home on Wednesday. Yeah. 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 So we, yeah. we had some time. So figured we'd do this little live in person for you guys. Um, it is episode 54. Yes. We, we checked. checked. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the buttons wherever they are up there, down there, I don't know where they are, wherever they are. Um, do those things. Uh, we love all the comments. And I know you guys actually loved our um, crazy girl chat. Uh, questions last week. So we're going to do some more of those for you today. Um, but first we're going to talk a little bit about weekend, what we've done this weekend, all of that. What yeah. have we done this weekend? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> North Americans weekend, man, it's such a whirlwind. It is, it's such a whirlwind. It so I just finished up hair and makeup stuff this morning. So I've got clients on this on stage this afternoon. Just the pros are on today. So Masters World, the men are in the morning and the women are in the afternoon. So we had this little break in here. You still got to go train today, right? I have to go train, yep. And then I got to get back, like, right at, I think the, the women start at three they today. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. And so, we got a couple couple of uh, athletes on stage today. So, yeah, it should gonna, be another exciting day. Got a figure girl getting on okay. stage. So, okay. um, she won her pro card here at North Americans years ago. So, oh, she cool. comes back and competes in this Masters World every year. So, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's fun. That's awesome. And um, I wonder how many of the ladies that turned pro yesterday are going to yeah. stay and do the show. Cause today. I had somebody ask me yesterday how many pros are in it. And I was like, well, I mean, I looked at the lists and I would say with crossovers, it's probably about 200 because you yeah. got, we got the men and the women and you got age classes. Yeah. yeah. So they go all the way up to 70, I think for the men's bodybuilding. That's, a, that's insane. That's yeah. insane. I met a, a competitor yesterday in the elevator who's 92 years Holy old. Shit. 92. And he was lost in the elevator because he has dementia. So oh, no. that's how we started talking that he was lost and I was helping him. But he was ripped, but it was so cute. Oh, so, so cute. Well, Could you imagine? What um it's Corinne's client, right? That went that went pro yesterday. Yes. Um Christine. She has Parkinson's yeah, disease. Yeah. yeah which yeah. is super special to me because I don't know if you even know this, but like I have a lot of experience with Parkinson's disease. Okay. Like I used to have multiple um, it's, it's a company called rock city boxing. So I used to have four in the Tampa Bay area. So I used oh. to drive around and it was, it's a boxing program for people with Parkinson's oh, disease. Wow. So like I, when I met Christine, I was like, Oh my gosh, like this is truly like my two loves of my career, like Parkinson's and bodybuilding. Yeah. So like, I cannot wait to text my general manager tomorrow at push and be like, show the parkies this, like yeah. show that she turned pro like you yeah. know and these guys are fighting for their lives in our boxing class so that was a really really special one so to me. is there is there something behind like boxing or the physical activity that helps with the actual disease itself yeah so with parkinson's disease it's a movement disorder so what right. what tends to happen is they get slower and rigid and very stiff mm -hmm. um and then they have involuntary movements like tremors and whatnot and then if you think about how a boxer trains right a boxer trains for Rapid. fast mm -hmm. and balance and footwork and steadiness um and so it is scientifically proven to alleviate the symptoms of Parkinson's wow. disease, number one, from the intensity of the okay. program, um, and then number two, of, of the, the pure, you know, essence of the program, huh. of it's it's training what they are losing or lacking. Oh, wow. Um, and then what's happening with Parkinson's is that in the neurons in their brain are starting to die, so dopamine is not, is not created, and dopamine is what's re responsible for, you know, um, movement patterns and whatnot. So um, it's super, super cool to see her be able to do that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. No, that was, was my, cool. that was my heart jerker yesterday See, for sure. Well, it was even for me and I don't even yeah. really know. I just met her a couple of times. She was here at Masters. So I met her at Masters. Yeah. Um, her daughter was here. I think her daughter did her hair and makeup, right? Oh, I don't know, but I love her hair. She does like she a does half like up, half, half down. Yeah. It's really cute. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really, really cute. Yeah. So her that was really sweet. awesome. So, you know, this is an out of reach of anybody, right? Right. No. You know, that's the cool thing about this, about this sport. And literally you can do it until you're 92. Like, come on. Literally. <laughs> that will be me. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, right? I hope not. <laughs> well, so the funny part about this, something that people don't know, is that when you win your pro card, you don't have to accept it if you don't want to. Correct. You can stay in the NPC. Yeah. So there are some 
specifically bodybuilders do this. There are some older bodybuilders that don't accept their pro card because once they go to the pro league, there's no place for them to compete anymore. There's no competition. There's no shows. So they'll stay in the NPC because they just want to have an actual stage to compete on. Don't have fun. So yeah. you know the fact they have this show, that's cool. You yeah. Know? But it is. Like, if you can't if you can't do this one show as a as a 70 year old athlete or something like that, you know, you're kind of screwed. Yeah, so, where are you gonna go? Yeah, next? where are you gonna go? Yeah. So you might as well stay in the stay in the NPC and have fun with it yeah. and continue to improve. You know, yeah. if I was that if I was there, I would probably do the same thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. at least you might have one or two other people in your class or something. So you at least have some a reason to get on stage, that kind of thing. So um um, it doesn't happen very often, but sometimes they just don't, they just don't want to accept their pro card and they just stay in the NPC. That's very interesting. So, very, very interesting. Yeah. You don't have to accept it if you don't want to. No. I mean, I would do the same thing. Like, it's like, okay, I got a pro card now, but now I can't really compete anywhere. You yeah. know, if, if they're doing it at that age, they're doing it for the love, love. of bodybuilding. Yeah, Absolutely. They, so. they know like Olympia, like, come on. Yes. Except if you want to go to the Masters Olympia, now you can go to the Masters Olympia. If you, so. if you win the 40 and over. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> at 70, that might, be, even, that might be difficult. So the, they're talking about that too, because like some of the top male bodybuilders right now in the open are in their 40s. Yeah. I mean, mature muscle is yeah. a thing. Yeah, it's I mean, like for sure. guys usually hit their like maturity at late thirties. So some of them are still competing on the Olympia stage when they're in their forties. Absolutely, even here in bikini too. But I'm just talking about male like open bodybuilders and stuff like that too. I mean, so for the size they have to put on, I mean, like Hunter Labrada started bodybuilding <clears throat> because of his dad right. when he was a teenager, right, right, right. right? So like Nick Nick uh, Walker, same thing. Like these mm -hmm. guys were attempting to be a bodybuilder in their teens mm -hmm. right and have like the backing of their family and whatnot but like some of these people they, they don't do it till they're a, an adult so they really don't have the size yeah. until you know you have to think when you're an adult you know able to afford your food and the sport like maybe in their mid-20s yeah so really when they're tap tacked out or got their best physique it's probably going to be early 40s or yeah. late 30s well they're talking about and i don't know how old he is but um one of the guys that's coming in this year that they think could be cracking that top three potentially is andrew jack and he's incredible. at least in his late in his late thirties, at least. Yeah, incredible. If not forties, and and he's gonna be in the possibly top three. Yeah, he's massive and he's tall, he's tall. too. So it takes a lot to fill that frame out. A lot, but he's made significant improvements from last year. So yeah, he's. Yeah. I love. He's a top I think contender. he looks phenomenal as far as his shape, his frame, all that kind of stuff. It's crazy to think that like he goes on stage over three hundred pounds. But he's six two, so he has to, you know, what in order to, in order to compete with the guys that are, you know, five eight, that kind of thing. What does that off season look like, too? Man? I don't know. <laughs> Could you imagine how uncomfortable that is? Oh my god, no. no. And going back to like, you know, Jay Cutler used to do these um, these interviews and and like articles and stuff where he would literally have to get up in the middle of the night to go eat. Eat. I know. I hear the guys say that and all the time. It. Like yeah. it's not even fun. Like right. you're you're not eating. It's not like you're eating fun food you're eating shit food like right the, like the, you're the eating chicken, chicken and rice yeah and you're just stuffing it in yep. i mean i know hunter labrada he literally will uh blend up his chicken for some meals because he's like i just can't eat anymore so that's like what's your heart right? right like for bikini for most of us it's like lack of food and we want more food yeah. and then there's the opposite it's like this is too much food but you have to get your calories in. that's right you know that's right you gotta do what you gotta do which so what's your what's your current prep update right now current prep update. I've had a really good last couple of days. I weighed in today at a new low. Um, so I'm 119.2 this morning. Okay. Um, I was stuck at 121 for like six days in a row. I was getting so frustrated. And then uh, we got a refeed. After the refeed, my weight went up a little bit. And then we've been down, 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 okay. down ever since. So um, all is moving well so far. My target weight to try to get dropped down to, and again, weights, this is our, our target Relative, weight. It could, yeah. yeah, it could be less. It could be more. Who knows? Um, was 118 that we thought we were going to have to like really get peeled. Um, and then I did an in-person check-in with Jamie, as did you. Mm -hmm. um, and we were very happy, really. Mm -hmm. And I never get a compliment from Drew. And he, I turned around and he just said, wow. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so, you know, and that's the thing, like what Drew and Jamie is like, they don't give a compliment unless right. they mean it. And I hate that, but I also love it because when they say something, yeah. I know they mean it. And I know where, where we're supposed to be. So I'm very happy. Um, the way my physique looks right now, being flat 
is insane to me. Mm -hmm. Like we've definitely cr had some really good improvements since last season. So I'm super happy. Good. Well, that was, you know, when we walked in, the, like when I walked in the room when I first got here, the first thing I thought was your face was so lean. We see each other on the podcast. Yeah. It's different when you see each other in person. Exactly. Because I haven't seen each other since Masters. And a lot's happened in a month. Right. You know what I mean? Or six weeks or whatever it's been, you know, that's the, yeah. probably calling me right now is my weight drop too there, much. There you go. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Why is your weight low? <laughs> But, um, but that's, you know, it goes fast those last, you know, six weeks or whatever it yeah. is. So it's like, it's the first thing I saw was your face when I walked in. I was like, oh, she's late. <laughs> yeah, you too. <laughs> yeah, no, with our right? forehead lines. No, with the veins that yeah. pop through and we yeah. just smile. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah so I, um, <clears throat> I checked in today. Um, I was at a new low that my last check in, I don't know about right now. Um, but the whole weekend until this morning. <laughs> I couldn't poop. <laughs> Sean, man, we got to talk to your, to your bowels. <laughs> well, so when I say whole weekend, it was a day. You know right, what I mean? But... Really, a day. That's it. And I went a little bit, but just not normal. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this morning, I actually woke up way before my alarm. So I got up this morning, and, um, and I did, like, like a yoga routine to get stuff moving. Yeah. So if you ever have a hard time with that, go on to YouTube and just type in, like, yoga moves to make you poop because yeah. that's what I do. Motility. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I do, you know, just a bunch of like, you know, basic yoga stretches to get your, get your intestines and stuff like that. Do you ever do um, colon massage? Yes. Okay. I did that as well. Okay. I did that as well. I think so, for you, it's like you have to get up so early to do is. hair and makeup. So not number one, you're not sleeping as well, but number two, like your body's like, what, what time is it? Where that's am right. I? You're just I'm I'm throwing out of routine. I'm yeah. throwing off my routine. Yeah. So I know my, my body is very good when it's on routine. Yeah. When it's not, it's like, what are we doing? Right. You know? Right. So that's what the issue was yesterday more than anything else. Like my, my routine when I get up in the morning is I get up, I go to the bathroom. Sometimes I can go number two. Sometimes I can't when I get up on the first thing in the morning, but I get my dogs out go take them outside. Um, and I have my coffee brewing and then I pose. And then once my coffee's done, you know, I have all my supplements stuff like that. That's something too. make sure you drink water before you ever put any coffee in your system. That's a thing as well. Yeah, so yeah. I drink my water and I have my supplements and all that kind of stuff before I do my coffee. So I've got all that done. And then I sit and I have my cup, first cup of coffee. And then if I haven't moved yet, that's when I get my movement right then. There you go. So, um, so that's my typical routine. When I come here, that's all out the window. Not even close. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, especially with makeup, it's like you're lucky to get a cup of coffee right, in time exactly. at that time yes. in the morning. So, yes. and you're just standing. Yep. Standing for hours. Yes. And then once you're down at the show, then you're sitting, sitting for, hours. for hours. So it's like, it's like, there's no like normal, regular daily movement. Right. You know? Right. So, yeah. I, but I did all my stretching. I did all my cardio yesterday. I did my training yesterday, which did keep things manageable yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so um it wasn't like i said it wasn't like normal but i was okay and yeah it was like 10 30 at night when we got done with like yeah. photos and stuff and she I went and got my cardio, cardio. <laughs> she's like i gotta go i gotta go get my steps in i was like damn girl we got, we got pictures done and i got i'm like i'm out i gotta yeah. go get my gotta go get my cardio in so you gotta do what you gotta do you know it is what it is yeah you do what you, you, do what you have to do people always say oh aren't you aren't you too busy like busy or like yeah this is my life this is just you do it you just you just do it. Everybody's busy. That's right. Like, and you know, and that's a conversation we have with our clients all the time. Like we get you're busy. We're yeah. busy. Everybody's busy, but that's if right. it means something to you, you'll figure out a way. Even if on a day like yesterday, you stay up late, you wait, I woke up super early. Like you just figure it out. Yep. You figure it out. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So, so yeah, so I got up and I did all that. I did my hair and makeup clients this morning. And then I went and checked in with Jamie. Um, I look better now than I did on stage last year, which is great but I still need to be better. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm transitioning into masters and all of that. And they have changed the requirements for the masters Olympia. What it was in the past was you just had to have a decent resume and, and apply and then they would accept you or not. Now you have to win a masters 40 and over pro show or 35. It's, you know, 35 or 40. If you win one of those shows, then you are qualified for the Olympia. So that changes strategy a little bit, not really a lot, still the, same, you know, plan pr pretty much, but you know, strategy changes a little. Um, but with that, I do need to come in tighter and harder. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, that's masters in general tends to be harder. So while I look 
good right now, I still need to be leaner. Yeah. I still need to bring my glutes in tighter. So um, I'm, a, I'm in a good spot. I have five, I have five weeks, so I'm not stressed yeah, about it. Plenty of that time. time. Yeah. And like, like we we're just talking about, it's like the last couple of weeks is when we really saw the changes start happening. You know, that it really is. It's, it comes down to those last, you know, six, seven, eight weeks when everything just starts kind of falling. Yeah. And, um, and you just see the noticeable changes almost daily, Yeah, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I'm at that point and plus, and plus like I plan on doing at least three, if not four shows. Okay. So, okay. you know, I've got a full month, you know, to six weeks or so to, after my first show to, to dial in even more. Yeah. And typically once you do that first show, then you have more and more that you, and you get better every show typically right. too, yeah. especially as you know, you're getting more food to fill right. out then you're, you know, right. your, your metabolism's kicking up and you're actually getting tighter into the other shows. So those last five weeks are just like the grind point, you know, and especially it's like that last little bit of body fat, you know, some people, they hold it in their you know, midsection. Some people it's in their glutes for me, yeah. it's my glutes. I think it's for you, for your, your glutes too. And it's yep. just like that last little bit, yeah. you know, your body wants to hold on to it. Yep. So it's just got to push down. Thinking, am, I, am I five weeks or is it four? I was just thinking about that. I, I mean, I'm know. three. So then I would be four, right? Yeah. I think I just screwed that up. Wait, let's see. One, two, three. Oh yeah. Wait. Four. Four, not five weeks, four weeks out. Still, still time. <laughs> still time. Four weeks till show or four weeks till peak week? Four weeks till show. Okay. So yeah. Some people count things weird ways. I count it that way too, but yeah, some, I don't no, know. no, because you're right. Because because I'm thinking because I've got another show that week after, and I was just thinking about posts on Instagram. And I'm like, wait, did I post that? Right? I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. <laughs> well, like I I'm like still confused on the Olympic. Are we six weeks out or five weeks out? That's what people are like. Six. Because, five weeks, five days. Yeah, because Daytona is going to be my first show, and then. Um, the Southern Muscle, Muscle Show is the following week, and then Olympia is the following week, okay. and then Hurricane is the week after that. Yep, yep. And then Atlantic Coast. Yep. So, I will definitely be doing up till her, Hurricane, and then maybe Atlantic Coast, depending on how those three. How go. those go? So yeah. you're gonna do Hurricane? Yeah. Fun. That's yeah. a great show. Yeah. Because you want it, huh? Well, yeah, but it is just a great show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll be there. Yeah. You're not gonna compete in it. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what the first two do. Because I'm supposed to go to Greece the next day. Oh, I leave okay, literally okay. from Hurricane that Sunday. I'm going no matter what for, yeah. you know, just to be there. But um, I leave from there to Greece. Okay. So I really don't want to have to pack, like, all my competition yeah, stuff sense. and carry it around Greece, Amsterdam, Paris trip. So yeah, we'll see. that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Well, the reason I'm doing that one more than anything else is because Jamie's going to be there. Yeah. So that'll be the first, the first time she's actually able to dial me in for your show. season yeah but that's normal for you too I know. so you guys got that got that on lock i know yeah <laughs> yeah so this is today was the last time that i will see her in person until until daytona yeah so well you feel like you got good time and feeling confident yeah 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 it. i uh, the main things there was two things i wanted to really i wanted to see me in person that's the main thing you know but i also wanted to check my transition during my comparisons versus my individual so I have a better glute on my left side, but I pose on my right side for my front pose. So if you're a posing client of mine, you know, I tell you to always go same side as your front pose, go to the back pose because it's faster during comparisons. So I wanted her to clarify and say, okay, is it worth it me going the same side or is it worth it me to go around the other Twister. side because my glutes better and I, I want to go the other way because my glutes better and she agreed. Okay. So, Good. yeah. Yeah. Good. So, yeah, hey, it's those small details that, matter right. you know and she um had an athlete this weekend who actually ended up turning pro and she was going into her side glute pose on the opposite side yes. and she kept fumbling in yes. that transition yes. and it was literally the night before show so it's like not the time to like completely change the routine and jamie's like do you see anything i'm like long term i wouldn't have her flip around unless she gets comfortable in that transition right. but i would just have her go right back into the same side glute pose because it doesn't right you know, same, same on either side. Um, and that's exactly what we were checking today. Right. To see right. if I did it without fumbling. Basically. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, I would fumble. I, I I've had that kind of transition where you're like in the model pose and you kind of like step and flip yep. and I would always fumble. So I'm like, yeah. it's not worth it. It's, yeah. you know, for a little, little extra flair or pop here and there, like for me, it just wasn't worth it. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's just my glute is that much better. My, my and that's a reason to make sure that you do it. That's right. You know? Yeah. Cause you have to show your, and I checked my hairstyle. We're going to go with the, the middle part. I like your middle part. Yeah, middle part straight. I like your middle part. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do for stage. Okay. So I have this hard times. I have a colic in my hair that that 
this piece of my hair, if I do a side part, it always falls on my face. Mm -hmm. Even if I spray it back, the only way I can keep it back is if I pin it and that bothers me. So we were talking about maybe like pinning the whole thing back, but I was, we were talking yesterday because Corinne showed up with her hair middle part mm -hmm. at finals. So I was like, I'll try that when I check in with Jamie tomorrow and see what she says. <laughs> <laughs> so now you just have to like blow dry it. Cause I was yeah. used to be a side part and then I, I, my hair thankfully just goes wherever I want it. But if you blow dry it like yeah. a certain way, I can help you with that. And then you teach it to go. Well, mine will, mine will, mine will do this like no problem. Okay. I did this no problem this okay. morning, oh. you know? So it's, um, this is actually a very easy hairstyle for me. If I do, if I do the side parts when I have issues, like I said, it just falls on my face or it goes flat or whatever. This, I can, this, this, I'm good. Okay. Well, you just got to speak to the hair gods. <laughs> On show day. <laughs> yep, exactly. And that's that's another thing I kept thinking in my head too. I'm like, I'm probably gonna put some wave in the ends because all of these shows are Florida and Georgia, and it's humid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, the only thing good about Hurricane in Florida is it's in October, so you might get some less humidity. Yeah. But it is Florida, so yeah. you might also get a rainstorm that day. Yeah. So you never. Know. Yeah, just like a little like soft wave just or something. Wave. At the end. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just so like it's a little bit more forgiving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's not. when you need your level five hairspray too. Right, exactly. Yep. Just spray it down with some some shine spray and oil and all that crap. Yeah. And do you have any like what's it called wax or something? Just... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> we were talking like... about like straight hair versus curly hair yesterday, and honestly, it just like depends on number one, like what makes you feel most confident, right. but number two, like where you're at, like in your environment. Yeah. Um, and like I did straight hair my first season, but. I had extensions and I had a bob when I first started competing. So when I put the extensions in and I had straight hair, like you could just oh, totally yeah. see like the transition yeah, yeah, yeah. on stage. I've, I've seen those photos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're awful. I know. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. They they were awful. Um, thanks, Kelly, for you know all this. No, uh, um, we've done we've done a lot of work. Um, yeah. But I would I don't think I could go back to straight hair just because I am like traumatized oh, from that yeah. look. I just I love a wave look. But again, like everybody's. Different. I've done this. I've done the split split straight like yeah. this before. Yeah. Um, and it was all the way down. That was actually the bad part about that was my hair was too long. It actually covered mm. my glutes a little bit, but that was too skinny anyway, so it didn't matter. But <laughs> the hair didn't make a difference. <laughs> it was too thin. Uh, but I actually really like like the actual look. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I have a bigger forehead. Which I, I like. Some oh people God. don't. Me and Allie were like. just having this conversation. Yeah. Some people don't like it. Yeah. I, I actually like having the big forehead. I think it's like, um, it's a unique thing. Yeah. Like it's, it's something that's, that I don't know. I just like it. Like, the, like some people hate it because it's very prominent. I like it because it's prominent. Right. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I, I mean, I like the way that my face is framed. framed. When I have the the hair down the middle, so I was this that this is the person I was having this conversation with it was Ali V last night, and yeah. she was saying that she can't wear straight hair because of her forehead. her forehead. Yeah, um, like these are things like I don't think about right because yeah. like we all have our things that yeah. we know with with each other. Yeah, um, but that's exactly what she was saying. That's so funny. That is so that's funny. So funny. Uh, I can see that because she she does have a longer forehead. Yeah, so I can understand that. And sure. I'm the one that taught her her uh, her curls and her hair. I love her. I mean, her hair's now it's beautiful, and I love the way she does her hair. So yeah. I'm like, why change it? Like, yeah. it looks perfect. She's like, I don't know. It's just like you know, we're girls. Like, we like to change our outfit, yeah, change our purse, that. and change our you know, but. When you find your look, you, you know, you got your look. That's so. right. You just never know. Yeah. Plus, another thing that comes into play, too, is your volume on your upper body. Like, I look a little bit better with straighter hair because I have a bigger upper body. Like, like soft. Softens yeah. the look a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's like not so it's not over, right. Yeah, it's not overwhelming. Right. It's not, it's not too much on top. So it draws the eye down and in more than anything else. Correct. So and then opposite for the athlete that you helped us out with. So we yes. had an athlete that her feedback is continuously like she needs more shape. Like they yeah. want to see like more like shape with her. She usually does straight hair. Yes. You did her glam this weekend, mm -hmm. and then I asked if you could do some curls and yes. position in a certain way to give her some, you know, just a, a more shape. And, like, you know, it's just when you look at her, just not be so flat. Yep. Um, and you nailed it. You Thank did you. such a fantastic Thank job. You. She loved it. You know, she was a little apprehensive because, again, she's comfortable with straight hair. But I was yeah. like, I really want to try this. Like, we have nothing to lose. Like, True. let's try it. Um, and she loved it. So she said it was her best glam look ever. I was like, and it was, you. it was, it was, I was like, I, you know, I do my best. Yeah. I do what I can. Yeah. So, but that's the other thing too. Like I listen, just like we, we always do this as coaches. We listen, like I listen to what you guys want, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and I want to, I want to deliver on what you guys want. Yeah. So yeah, it's important, but it's also like, we say something 
that we think we want to see. But then I also trust your judgment as right. the professional, you know, like I was like, Hey, I think I want this lipstick and this hair. Like, what do you think? Yep. And you know, it's a collaboration at the end of the day, 100%. especially at a national level show, like yeah. these little things matter. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, going to the next detail on that was her tan. So right. you had to redo her whole tan for her. I did. Yeah. She came up to the room. This is Drew's athlete, but she came up to the room and she got sprayed by the company here and usually they're terrible, but they were awesome at masters nationals. Yeah. And it's the same company. Like we even went down and we're like, you guys did amazing. Yeah. It's usually off. Like we sung their praises. So we were confident that, you know, only a few weeks later we would have the same outcome absolutely not yeah um yeah so she showed up in the room and it literally just looked like the tan was like sitting on her skin it was just very like like ashy it was weird um like you could literally just go up to her skin and it was just like coming off so you know drew and i are just making the tough call we're like do we have a rinse do we not do we have a rinse do we not and i'm like let's have a rinse so she rinsed and literally the tan was gone so oh, you wow. know it was not it absorbed at all so yeah. now i'm like okay so we found a bottle of super dark we made the tough call to do super super dark um and it looked a lot better yeah. like even if she was 15 percent lighter than the rest of the class which she was yeah. um it looked a lot better than what was going to be coming on stage just like brown and blotchy and muddy and weird um, so she came to go on for her first class and she was 15% lighter. And then Drew's like, do I get, have her get sprayed backstage oh, yeah. now yeah, yeah, yeah. from the same company? Yeah. So I'm like, have them spray her, but you stand right there with a the light. Yeah. And, and, um, he found a, a really nice sprayer backstage and she was, she was like, you tell me what you want and I'll do it. So good. she ended up coming in with a really good color after that, but it's just, it's a tough call. It's yeah. a tough call when she's an hour and a half out from yeah. stage. You know, you don't want to stress out the athlete, but you also don't want them to say after the show, like, why didn't you tell me if that was something so simple you could have done? So it ended up working out, but it's a tough call as a coach in this well, situation. I was sitting there waiting for the phone call to come fix her makeup and hair because if you go rinse and like, I was, I was afraid it was going to fuck everything up. That was going to be my next phone call, but she had a bonnet. <laughs> thankfully. She had thankfully. a bonnet. And, yes. and I think everyone should, you yes. know, especially if you wear curls on the day of your show and especially if you're blonde a lot and i didn't think about this too when i was first blonde is like if that hair is just sitting on the tan all day yeah. your extensions or your hair will like suck on the, the tan and then you start getting like that ash or uh, what's it called just like the Orange. yellowy orangey look and yeah. it's the tan so like keeping your hair in that bonnet just helps with the curls the humidity and just keeping it off the tan but she had a bonnet with her and she just said on my art right we're good definitely going to rinse yeah yeah um, but i was gonna call you next yeah. and be like sorry well, it's funny you say that with the blonde hair because my second show ever this was back before they had tanning companies at shows that didn't exist it wasn't a thing so you had to do your own tan. And oh, I, wow. used, I used Jantana back then. So okay. my first year in competing, I used Jantana for the first two shows, and I've never used them ever, ever again. <laughs> but, I haven't even heard of that company, so clearly. Yeah, they, they're always a sponsor of the Arnold. Always a sponsor of the Arnold, the Jantana. So, wow. um, yeah, they were the original. The original. Yeah. No idea. They're orange. Very, very orange. Very, very orange. <laughs> so... The second show I ever did was Tennessee State show. It was at Knoxville and it was at their uh, their college there. And there was no AC. It was in the middle of, of August. There's no AC. It was so hot. I still, I have video of this. I have video of me on stage during comparisons and the expediter on stage with a towel blotting me down. That was me at Governor's Cup yeah. last year. Yeah. And That's embarrassing. Yeah. So when prejudging was over, my tan had sweat. I was blonde. I was bleach blonde. My tan had sweat into my hair. So literally between pre-judging and finals, I went home, showered, redid my hair, re like blow dried my hair, redid my tan, redid my did redid everything, started from scratch. Wow. Like I washed my hair and everything. Wow. Because I was orange. Wow. I would be that would stress me out. Yeah. That would stress me. I was, it was only my second show, so I didn't know what I was doing anyway. So I was like, oh, whatever. It is what it is. Well, you knew enough that you knew not to go back to finals yes. with tan all in your hair. And <laughs> well, I was streaking down me. Yeah. I was sweating. So it was little, little streaks down my body. And I was like, no, this is, and I felt disgusting. I felt gross. Like I've been sweating. We, they kept us on stage in comparisons. That class was 18 girls deep. And they kept us on stage in comparisons for 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah. I, they did four call outs and I was in all four of them. How I was in all four callouts, I don't know. They and wanted it. You were the standard. They just wanted to yeah. see you against all the. And I ended up placing second. Hell yeah! <laughs> well, why were you in the last call? I don't know. <laughs> you were like, the standard. I was in every callout, and I placed second. Well, you were like 
can you pay for the small be redones? She kept you on stage four times longer than you needed to. I know. Well, and again, going back, this was 2009. So this was a long time ago. Um, and, you know, that, that was back when figure was like the division. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was deep. It was yeah. deep. And, um, yeah, I don't. Who knows? I got nationally qualified, though, so. <laughs> It was all worth it. The shower, redoing the hair, makeup, it was all worth it. That was the thing. I was like, I don't know. It was, it was, it was rough. I was, in a, I was, that's why I was sweating so bad too. Listen, like I'm a sweater too. So like there's, there's been a few shows where like I have to rinse yeah. in between. I'm like, sorry. Yeah. And that's the, the, the great thing about the DIY yeah. is that you, you know, you do have such control over that. The tan is the worst part, man. The it worst is. part about it. Is. There was two or three athletes we had to have rinse this weekend. Like it was I did in Pretty Hawaii. Bad. I did in Hawaii. I remember. Yeah. After mm -hmm. prejudging, I went to Ben Rance and yeah. sprayed. Yeah. Well, and, and again, you had control over that because you were doing your own tan, but some, you know, girls, especially newer athletes, like they don't know. Yeah. You know, I, there was a girl, remember at Masters where her, her tan was green, mm -hmm. like green, 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 like mm -hmm. incredible Hulk green. Yeah. And she didn't rinse. She came back to finals and her makeup was green at that point. Yeah. Like she, I think she went put tan on her face. Yeah. Probably because she tried to match her face to her tan. Yeah. I'm like, no, you should have just taken the whole thing off. Yeah. Yep. It was really bad. Yeah. Well, another athlete um, yesterday backstage too, she got sprayed by another company that was here, but not the host company. Mm. And they gave her a bottle of foam, like a top foam yeah, yeah. to do. And she gives me the top foam and I'm helping her backstage and I put it in my hand and it's green. Yeah. It comes out green. And I'm like, uh, so I like do a little bit on her skin and it's green. Yeah. You know, but sometimes it has like a hue of green. Right, right, right. But it develops. Yeah. This was green. So, and she's fair skinned, uh, red hair. So I was no. like, so I called Jamie backstage. I'm like, because it's her athlete. Like, what do you want me to do about this? And Jamie, you know, we're both going back because her tan looks awful at this point with, mm. with no, none of this foam on it. I have to do something. So we ended up mixing two companies products together as a Hail Mary and it worked. Oh, Thank wow. God she was a little slightly green, but it was better than what was presented before that. It's just such a tough freaking call. And I yeah. don't understand why it's so hard to like get a good tan sometimes. Well, sometimes something that happens to people don't realize with tan is tanning products expire. Yes, they do. So if you're using expired product, yeah. it's going to turn green. Yeah. It's going to do that. It's going to, it's going to be ashy. It's going to be those things. Yeah. So if you're using old product, you're going to get a shit tan. Absolutely. Like after I'm done with a season, I give away the product yeah. or I toss it because it's not going to be good That's in right. a few months. So right. yeah, I did. It's, it's chemically put together. Like right. those, it's going to, it's going to expire. Right. And it's the, the chemical is meant to change, right. Mm -hmm. And process right. over time. Right. So right. You know, but this was given to her fresh from this company. Right. But if I wasn't backstage with her, she would have just put this on all over thinking that this was a good product, mm -hmm. you know, thinking it was coming from this company, but did they even look at the product and test it, you know, and that's, it's just so hard, you mm -hmm. know, that's, it's some, some things you have zero control over mm -hmm. that she would have had no control over because she would have just put it on thinking it was okay. And mm -hmm. thankfully I was there to be like, I don't think this is the right call. <laughs> well, that, like, you can't, you can't see yourself clearly on the day of the show either. Like I, like it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. It's really hard. Especially like when a, a proper tan, like a good tan, you look like really dark. Yeah. And some girls are like, am I too dark? I'm like, no, this is perfect. Because yeah, once the light cool. goes on you, you know, it's, I'm sure you get this with makeup all the time. Like people are like, oh my gosh, like this is a lot. Like I feel like a clown. Yep. But once you get on stage, you don't see that. It just right. looks perfect. You yep. know, you have to over exaggerate things because those lights wash you out so much. Yeah. And, you know, again, going back to like skin quality and texture and things like that too. Like the girl I had this morning, I was putting on her makeup. And I was putting on the same amount of makeup that I put on most people, but her skin was just sucking it in. And I was like, all right, I'm going to put another layer on because if we don't, you're going to look splotchy. It doesn't look like you have makeup on. And this is something like I hear people, girls all the time saying they want to do their own makeup. I was like, these, you don't understand like how this can react with your skin. Mm -hmm. Sometimes her skin was just so dry she's a figure athlete. Mm -hmm. So she's, you know, dehydrated dry. and yeah. things like that, that it was just sucking everything in. I'm like, all right, we put another layer on and you just kept, kept blending it. She's good. She's fine. But like, again, she has two layers of makeup on versus the girls yesterday had one. So it's different. It's just different. Stage makeup's a whole nother animal. Yeah. Like it is not a normal makeup, which is, I will never do my own makeup. I, <laughs> I tried to do it once and it was awful. Like never do it again. Like, it's an art. Yeah. It's an art. It's something that you have to understand. And even at 
typical makeup artist doesn't understand stage makeup. So like I tell my girls all the time, like you worked super hard for this day. Like makeup is the one thing you have to invest in. That's right. Like that has to be correct. There was some girls yesterday. I'm sure you saw pink suit, pink nails, pink yes. eyes, pink. That's so much pink. Yes. I was just about to say that trends change too. They, like they, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. I do pink. Like I do a pink and purple eye, but it's very like subtle and yeah. it's, it's blended and peachy. Pe yeah. And this was like pink, yep. like pink rainbow on the eye. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was funny. It was funny because they were doing that and you were there. Were you there in New York? You were there in New York, right? No. No. Well, you mean universe or you mean like New York? No, Pro? New York. Pro. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, because we were we were there and, and Debbie Vanyan was talking about how the makeup was so terrible on so many girls and we're like, she's like, I hate that red eye. What are they doing with all that red? I saw and a, red, a red eye too. Yeah. Like a red suit with a red yeah, eye. Like, terrible. I don't know. Like, would you do that to go out? No. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like like a sultry, like a like a smoky eye or like a gold, you know, with, with a red suit. You always want to do something that's going to enhance your natural beauty. Yeah. You don't want to do something where it's like, oh, look at her makeup. Right. Right. Especially as a master's athlete. We said yeah. this before, like more color and more like, it just, it makes you almost look older. Yep. Right. Like, so, yep. so yeah, it's just. There's it's, a fine line, which again, going back to your, the client from yesterday too, no nude lip either. She loves a nude lip yeah. off stage. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. like, you know, you need color on stage or you look like you have no lips. Yeah. And that can come off as, as actually a resting bitch face too. It can come yes. off like you're not smiling. And it's funny because she doesn't like to smile on yeah. stage. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, smile. Yeah. No, you <laughs> yes. need that color to make it, to make you look like you have lips and like you're smiling. And youthful and absolutely. Yeah. yeah I've seen, I saw some pretty bad makeup yesterday. Mm -hmm. Saw some pretty, not terrible tans, like terrible, but you could definitely tell the ones that were sprayed versus like a DIY because again, just had like that. It was just sitting right on top, on top of their skin. Yeah. So it can also have been because it's been humid this weekend. Why the, the tan wasn't setting in. You're you're absolutely correct. And it was raining. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So again, you have to have the environment. Yeah. And that's not something you can necessarily change. No. You know, you just and have my to own hair it. all weekend has been a frizzball mess. And uh -huh. It's just because it's so humid. Yep. So I'm carrying around my hand fan with me everywhere. Yeah. It's on the charger right now in my room. <laughs> <laughs> these are the things you're getting all these little nuggets from show weekend, guys. Can't yeah. Pay attention. The my notes. Yeah. Yeah. Behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> if someone couldn't fig figure out how to hook up a IV of caffeine to me at all I times, know. we would be golden. I know. Yeah. Well, I think that's also one of the issues. Like we were talking about the going to the bathroom thing earlier. It's like that. I don't, I typically have one energy drink a day and I do it during my workout and that's it. I had two yesterday because Greg brought me one. I was considering dozen. two yesterday. And that could have been an issue with my going to the bathroom thing too. That could have been. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I do want a day too. And then last night we were going back down for finals and I looked at you like, I really want a second energy drink. Do you think it's going to go late? He's like, no, it's going to be done in a couple hours. It went really late. <laughs> I could have had a different one. I'm glad I did it. Yeah. But, and especially I was able to sleep last night a little bit, but. Yeah. It's, it's, those are the things on show weekend that, you know, the caffeine, like mm -hmm. sometimes we, we need the caffeine yeah. to think, to survive, to be bad, you know, and then yep. it, it affects us later yep. personally. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Coaches are martyrs. <laughs> you hear these things, you hear these things. <laughs> this is, this is what we all talk about on Sunday after the show. Yes. This is this, these are the things we go over, you know? Yes. It really is. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, so this weekend's wrapping up. Um, you're staying until Wednesday because you got your road to the Olympia. Yeah. And then are you home until? No. No. I'm home for 24 hours. No. And then this is next weekend coming up is, um, or this this upcoming weekend is the concert that Drew wanted to go to. Oh, that's right. That's right. So that's I'm right. literally going home to refresh my bag uh, <laughs> and then get on the road to Lake Tahoe for the weekend. Drew wants to go see a concert out there. We're meeting some friends from Florida out there. Okay. So okay. Um, this is the last thing I want to do for all of you guys. I'm not going to tell my husband that. I'm just going to keep putting my smile on my face and doing what he wants me to do and go be a good wife for the weekend because after that, tell it's... Tell him you can't watch this episode. Yeah, no. <laughs> Honey, I hope we're not watching. Uh, sometimes he does. Sometimes he doesn't. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to put on my big smile and this weekend's for him and then he knows as soon as I get back I'm going into crate mode so yeah, 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 yeah. Get, getting ready for for my own show so I was saying like I don't have to worry about dancing anything because he's been banned from Facebook so like he's not on social media at all yeah so they had your your um, engagement anniversary yeah yesterday, <laughs> yesterday and she yes. posted on Facebook but she knew he wouldn't see it so she had a, a screenshot it. It to text. <laughs> just so you know I did you know, post I posted so, you know. yeah that was cute <laughs> I was like, that was cute 
<laughs> before he became an outlaw on Facebook. He's Hopefully like, he gets it back. I know. Well, he said he's like, this makes no sense. He's like, I'm that dude that never posts, and I get banned from Facebook. He's like, the only time he has posts on his on his page are when I tag him in posts because I'm I post. He doesn't. He doesn't even have an Instagram page. He doesn't have he doesn't have social media at all. He had a face. He had a Facebook because everybody has a Facebook. That's how he kept in touch with his friends from high school, his, his family, all this kind of stuff. And when my business page got hacked, his personal page was linked to the business right. page. So the people that hacked the business page went through his account and then started opening up, like opened up an Instagram account. The Instagram account got banned for whatever they were posting on the Instagram account. So then he ended up getting banned from Facebook because of that Instagram account. And you have since gotten the business account Correct. for you, business account but back. not dance. Yes. Because the business account, what they did is it was some hacker and they went in and they put a third party app onto that meta. Yeah. And they were using our credit card and, and pay, uh, PayPal and everything like that to pay for their ads. So were you able to get the money back? Well, or in they, dispute, we put it into dispute. I don't know if we have the money back yet or not. I know, I know Amex is going to give us the money back. For yeah, sure. yeah, they yeah. always do. Yeah. yeah. They're, They're really good at that. And yeah. Like that but, I don't. but that's what triggered Facebook to be like, we saw you had fraudulent activity, so we're giving you your business page back. Got it. Got it. Right. Yeah. But Dan didn't have anything like that attached to his personal page. Sure. So he's just kind of shit out of luck right now. So he, they did send him an email about trying to reactivate it or something, but who knows what will happen with that. Hey, so. any communication is I a know. step in the right direction. Isn't it crazy? Like Facebook and Instagram, like honest, like makes billions of dollars and, and you cannot get numbers. someone on the phone or in an email like it's like oh you need to contact us get in line that's right so, no literally like they, like dan was saying there's like you you've got billions of people billions of dollars like you, you can't have somebody on the phone right it's like, ridiculous it's crazy it's ridiculous it's crazy. so that's why like the, the the verified check mark like i do that now for this reason like if anything freaking happens yeah. i pay you guys 15 dollars a month get my account back like yeah. figure it out yeah. like you know it's at this point social media is our business you know so it's oh, it's it's nerve-wracking it's, it it's never happened to me. <laughs> i know right knock on some wood right? yeah <laughs> yeah well, and even with that, because we didn't, we have two factor identification on on everything, and we didn't get notified that somebody was on. That's on even. Our that's even more concerning. Yeah. But these hackers are good. They're I mean, good. just a couple of weeks ago, I saw. No, I don't know what's happened because since then, but like some hackers got a hold of every American's um, social security number. It was just a couple of weeks ago. Oh my God. I mean, I still believe in the company. Have you ever heard of a uh, LifeLock? Life yeah. yeah. I mean, my dad had yeah, it right. and um, he, he actually, without it, got his identity stolen. He let it lapse for a year and that's oh, the wow. year he got his identity oh. stolen. It, it is a bear. Yeah. A luck. bear. Exactly. That somebody opened up a mortgage in his name. Like it was awful. Wow. Um, and now he has the LifeLock again and somebody tried to do it again. Like wow. my dad never never has good luck um but they caught it the second time so he's like you need to have this i'm like yes i do so now well, i even have so on my computer i have the norton and it has a vpn so yeah. i'm on that right now yes i'm here so we're in a we're in a hotel we're on the wi-fi here so never know <laughs> like never know. protect yourself you guys is what we're saying as much as you can i mean at some, at some point we're not going to do that anymore so you know just do whatever you can up front though so they can't, they can't get a hold of you because once they do it's impossible to get get it reversed yeah well the last time i was in pittsburgh is when the uh the, not the i keep calling it a cyber attack but it wasn't oh, when yeah. microsoft shut down and i forget what they called it they forgot to update or something or yeah there was and there's a mistake in the update right and then all of the apps and you know websites and everything is not functioning well and it was a it was scary but it was like a true example of how reliant we are oh, 100%. on computers like if 100%. something happened you're fucked like yep airlines yep. your business like so protect yourself at all costs there you yeah. know because that was the thing too because we launched cuties conquering the stage tickets and we launched a webinar and everything for that and dan's the one that runs all of that through facebook yeah so we were putting ads out and stuff we couldn't get the ads out like didn't launch the way we wanted it to so well and you pay for the ads yeah. and they're not out <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's, it's like, annoying okay. it's like cool just screw our business. Yeah, literally, literally. <laughs> but so, how are the ticket sales? Did you actually really get them out? Good. Good. Yeah. Good. So we're we're probably going to do another webinar because okay. that's the only thing that got really messed up in that whole situation is we just weren't able to to like remind people 
that we had the webinar awesome. going. So we had a decent, we had a decent number of people show. We had yeah. good ticket sales and stuff like that. So we've already got more people coming this year than we had last year. So that's good. Wow. Um, but we're probably going to do the webinar again just because of that. So we got to go back in and kind of relaunch it and everything yeah. like that just so everybody gets to it. All the webinar is, is it explains everything that we do. Right. So if you've never been, it gives you the inside look as far as like how the whole weekend is going to go, how it's set up, what you're going to learn, all those kinds of things. So you know what you're getting with your ticket. Yeah, because it's a jam-packed weekend. Right. And if you've never been there before, it's hard to like understand the scope right. of it. And it right. is multiple days. It's two to three days. So yeah. I think that's a really good idea, especially for people that have never been before. Right. I know that I always, you know, say you guys have to go and like, this is really like the time yeah. to go, right? Like, But we did on, on the webinar, we did come up with our theme for this year. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are we sharing? <laughs> yeah, 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 we can share. So, um, cause we do a theme every year. So a couple years ago it was like um, the, the cheetah print um what was it cat, cutie cat walk all that kind of stuff we did um dripping in diamonds dripping in diamonds last, last year. year we're doing masquerade ball this year Ooh, yeah so we gotta get a oh, like a mask. a mask yeah yeah, yeah. for okay. for the for the banquet and everything like that so we'll figure out all the details and stuff like that too but like when i had the girls on the on the webinar we're yeah. like well this is one that came in what do you guys think oh i love that one so they threw out some other some other ideas and stuff too yeah, yeah, yeah. but everybody was like no masquerade ball so we're gonna go with that i love that I think yeah it's really pretty yeah, yeah, yeah. Really plus the the venue is the omni shoreham in dc which is a historical um resort okay so it's the only his historical resort in dc um and it's massive and like they hold um uh president presidential inaugurations everything are held there wow. like it's the Beals have stayed there like Aretha Franklin all the big all, anybody big with music has stayed there basically so well, when this one's involved you know it's going to be <laughs> couture if you've never yes and that's the coolest thing about this they used to have so they have so many different like themed rooms one of the rooms that we were looking at we're not doing uh seminars in there but we were looking at the room and it used to be their pool and that used to be where the navy seals would train wow it used, it's it's an actual like conference room now, but it used to be the pool where the Navy Seal the Navy SEALs would actually train. So there's no pool in there now, but no. it's the room. Correct. Wow, that's yeah. really so that's like when you look at the ceiling, you can see like the it's like the outline of what the pool used to be sure. on the ceiling. Sure. So it's like you could see you could tell when you walk in there, it used to be something else. Yeah. And like the hotel itself used to be apartment buildings. Okay. So all of the rooms are different. Wow. So that's there's nothing that's like the same in these rooms. They're all different layouts because they used to be apartments and now yeah. they're and now they're a hotel room. It's gonna be so weird not being I know at, it's a different it's a different it's Yeah, a different it's gonna be weird not being yeah. at the same venue, but it's exciting. Yeah. You know, it's it changes good yeah. and the I, only I know thing, the only thing they don't have is they don't have the mall attached. That's the only thing they don't have. But they have a spa, they have fitness center, yeah. they have everything there, they have a bar, they have restaurants, they have everything. So the, the food was just yeah. so Food here is very good too. I, and I like I said, if you're involved, like I know it's going to be yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm really excited good. for you and you guys, <laughs> and it's gonna be good. We're gonna yeah, it's gonna be another great event. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. So yeah. we finally got, you know, we finally got it launched off and stuff like that. So that's good. And now we just gotta double back and redo it because yeah, of Facebook. Because of Facebook. <laughs> Thanks, Facebook. <laughs> Oh man! But with that, let's do a couple of questions. We'll just do a few. We've got, we've got, we've got a few minutes here. Let's do a couple of questions. Interrupting our scheduled programming for just a moment here to introduce our brand new YouTube channel partners, Liquid Sunrays. If you know anything about me, you know that I've used Liquid Sunrays, nothing but Liquid Sunrays, my entire competitive career for 15 years, and we are so excited to welcome them as an official partner of our YouTube channel now. So if you've never checked them out, scan the QR code right here, or I will also put a link for their site down into the description box below. Get over there, check out their products and services, book them for your show, get their DIY stuff, get their competition skin prep. You'll want to use a skin prep even when you're not in competition prep. It's that fantastic. And let them know that I sent you. You can use code cuties15. And again, thank you so much for your belief in us and in our products and in our services. We believe in you just as much. So thank you so much for your support, Liquid Sunrays. And again, scan this QR code right here. Go check them out. Let Mama Rays know that Mama Cutie sent you. If you got one, you can go for it. I gotta pull it up. Yeah, me too. Hold on. <laughs> and we're like, we, we were ready. We were. We had them. What's the funniest thing that ever happened to you during a vacation or a work day? Funniest thing that ever happened to me. Okay, I've got one. Okay, you, Just, go, you go then. It's kind of scary, honestly. Okay, so, all right. <laughs> 
back in the day, I used to do um, promo modeling. Okay, so like I lived in Vegas, and I used to work um, booths and stuff like that. So during big seminars and 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 um, expos and stuff like that, I worked the company's booths. <laughs> so there was well, she's they, laughing. So that's good. She went from it's scary to well, now we're laughing. What is? We're gonna get there. We're okay, gonna get there. Okay. So <laughs> well, they 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 in Vegas they have um, lots of different conventions for every business type you can think of, and yes. one was. Uh, specifically geared towards technology in porn. Okay. So um, normally you would have your booths would be inside of banquet halls and, you know, conference centers, things like that. This particular seminar or this particular um, expo was held at the Hard Rock Casino and the booths were the cabanas at the pool. (laughs) I just like the zero (laughs) privacy. (laughs) No. So we got paid to wear bikinis and walk around all day. Okay. Right. So good for you. Right. Exactly. So um, the cool, I mean, there's two parts to the story. So the cool part of this story is during the um, seminars themselves, during the actual expo itself, they had a hot body contest and I was working and I decided to enter that as well. And I won it. <laughs> so My girl. I, made, I made an extra thousand dollars on top of the money I was making Damn, just, just for standing there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. for standing there at the booth. Okay. We'll take walking. it. We'll take it. So that was the cool part. That was the fun. That was, that was the best part about it, about that. The scary part about this. Okay. I remember this is the porn industry. So there are some not so savory characters there sometimes. And one of the, performers female was not sober let's put it that way um came into the cabana that we were working and was lost her balance (laughs) and fell into the glass table and busted it all over the place like literally like what something you'd see from a movie like where they like fall on the table and it just shatters yeah she did that all right was she okay Eventually, but they, I mean, she was, she left in an ambulance because she was fell in, fell into a glass table and was inebriated. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You probably see such <laughs> some shit, man. <laughs> so, so that, that's my story. <laughs> so how about you? <laughs> Mine is not that interesting at all. I don't know how, maybe I should have gone first. I was like, I was trying to think for a minute. I was like, oh yeah, that's a good one. Uh, yeah. (laughs) The first one that came to my mind was like, this was like my first vacation with Drew and his family. And we, his parents live in Miami and we took the boat with the entire family over to Bimini, which is the first island of the Bahamas. So it's like, depending on the weather, it could be like a two hour, like a four hour boat ride. Um, so they rented this apartment and it was like, two levels so the bottom level was like where you keep your boat and then like a storage and then the top was like the actual apartment and we pulled up and there was literally water coming out of the apartment and then like down into into the water like pouring out of this unit that we were renting so we're like okay maybe they um are washing you know maybe there's a hose running no, the hot water heater broke and it was literally, it, there was, we opened the door. There's like a foot of water oh, in no. that apartment. Um, and you're in the Island of Bimini, you right. know, like well, there's you not do? a lot. So we called the, you know, the people and they ended up getting us another unit on the other side of the Island. But we were like, Ugh. you know, we just got through like a three and a half right, hour right. boat ride. We're like, starving. We've been in the sun. Yeah, exactly. And that we think about like, what, what would have happened if you didn't actually go in that room that day. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that would have, that would have spilled over to other people. Exactly. You know what I mean, yeah, I know. It's like, we caught it semi in time, but not really. Yeah. It was, um, it was scary. It was oh, really wow. scary. And again, like this is my first like vacation with the Brandons, you know, I'm like, <laughs> like my best behavior. And I'm like, now what do we do? <laughs> and I'm not going to be the brat. That's like, Oh my God, I'm hot. Right. Even though it's like, I'm hot. I'm hungry. I want to get off this boat. I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm just, keep smiling yeah that's what you got to do in that situation yeah. you got to make a good impression exactly yeah, yeah. that's fun yeah so the vacations never uh never a dull moment right i didn't let me see you have fun mm. hmm. i'm trying to think 
Oh, here we go. If you were a kitchen appliance, which would you be? Is this what I, what, which, which one would I want to be or which one am I, which one am I? Um, which one would you want to be? I don't know. Kitchen appliance? I would um, be a ninja. Uh, no, I would be a coffee maker. I would be an espresso uh, maker. Oh, there you go. That's a good one. That's a yeah. good one. I, I, we were literally just talking about appliances while I was doing my hair and makeup client this morning because she's talking about how she just got a ninja, ninja creamy. And I think love, I, love yeah, a ninja creamy. I think I would probably be a, a, a an air fryer. An air fryer? An air fryer. An air fryer is good for like everything. Everything. Yeah, and everybody right. loves an air fryer. That's right. That's what yeah. I'm like. You'd be you light. Can, you can literally You'd cook be used. anything. Yeah. All yeah. the time. Yeah. You can cook anything in an air fryer. Okay. I like that one. Yeah. It's a good one. I think. <laughs> I think. I, I, the, the first, when I read the question, I said an air fryer, but honestly, yeah. I haven't used an air fryer in a couple of years. I used to use an air I know, fryer I all the time. Well, that's what I was saying to her. I used to use yeah. it all the time. I don't use it at all anymore. I barely heat up my food. These days. Same. Because like, we were talking about microwaves and yeah. all that kind of stuff. I don't use a microwave. I don't. I yeah. Don't, it's don't just cold. I'm fine. Things. Yeah. I'm that yeah. person. I am absolute savage when I'm this close to show. It's like, oh, I don't even have time to stand in front of the microwave and watch it for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Same. I'm like, I just, I'll just eat it cold. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm, I'm really good with that. I don't even cook my own food. Dan does it. He, he grills. He grills my meat. I just make rice. Like, that's all I make. And I then I get that. my mega fit meal shit. So. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, I'm going to do that. <laughs> Can your husband talk to my husband? <laughs> Sometimes he makes rice. I had to, I did tell him that. Uh, He's not as bad see. as I put him out to be. What's the most outraged thing you've ever done for love or friendship? Not a lot. <laughs> I'm just being honest. <laughs> What's the most outrageous thing I've ever done for love or friendship? I mean, I don't know if it's out like outrageous, but like when I met Drew, like I was a victim of my trauma. Like I was in that victim mentality and I had a lot of growing up to do. And Drew was the only one that checked me. He mm -hmm. was like, listen, like you have this shit, but like you are now deciding to be that person versus like, yeah, you know, fixing yourself. So we right. went through, and I, th I think we've talked about this. Yeah. We went through a, a sex mm -hmm. and intimacy course and it was 16 yeah. weeks. And to me, it was outrageous at the time. Like I was like, I don't want to do this. Like I can't do this. It was, it was very, 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 vulnerable mm -hmm. um and at at the time to me seemed outrageous and then by the time i was in it i was like wow like every couple should do this whether yeah. you have sex and intimacy issues or not like this is such a good stepping stone so i would say that that was it because that was really the first time that i gave a fuck about someone enough to be vulnerable and step yeah. outside of myself and do something for someone else, 100%. you know, like, and before that in relationships, like, what can you do for me? Because right. like, I've been a, ch a child that, you know, everything has happened to you. So like I, the world deserves to give it, to give yeah. back to me where Drew was like, I'm going to give you everything, but you also have to work for yourself. And I was like, that's a huge mindset okay. shift. Absolutely. Huge. Absolutely. Huge. Yeah. Life changing. So, yep. Um, for me, I moved across the country twice. Twice. So like you went and then went back. No. Um, so it was with Dan. Okay. And I was living in Vegas. I moved to Tennessee to be with him. Um, and then we broke up <laughs> and I moved to Jersey. <laughs> and how long, uh, how long were, did we break up for six months? Okay. So he, he was going through a lot of stuff and he straight up was an asshole. Like he just was, and I was yeah. just like, I'm not doing this anymore. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, he helped me move to Jersey. And during that whole move, he was like, I don't want this to be over. I said, well, then you're going to have to prove it. I said, I signed a six month lease. So, you know, prove it to me. You got six months. Good. So probably the best thing you ever yeah, did. Yeah. 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 So he did. He completely changed, completely changed. I mean, he'll, he'll straight up tell you he was an asshole. Yeah. So, um, completely changed his whole, his whole behavior and everything. Um, he would come up to Jersey and stay with me for like two weeks at a time during that whole six months. Yeah. And then when we got to the end of my lease, we were back together and I moved back to Tennessee to be with him. There you go. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. In the beginning with Drew and I broke up for about four weeks too. And it was the best thing that ever happened. Like yeah. we knew for sure at that moment, like, or he did that this is where he wanted to be, you know? So yep. sometimes you have to take a step back to know where you're going. That's right. And not that you ever weren't, but like how strong and independent you were. Yeah. He was like, oh, fuck, like I really need to change right. if I'm going to take this woman that's know? right absolutely and so he did and you know and here we here we are like i said engagement anniversary was yesterday that was 14 years ago we've been together for almost 17 years so 
Yeah. I mean, I guess it, it worked. <laughs> was that uh, during year one? Yes. It okay. Was. It was. Wow. Yeah. We've been dating. So it was, we, we met online. So we've been dating like virtually for four, six, five months, something like that before I moved, I moved to Tennessee. He was doing work in Tennessee. So I moved to Tennessee to be with him. He wasn't living there either, but he ended up moving there too. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then that's, that's when it didn't work when that first time. Sure. And then that's when I, then that's when I left. Wow. I was like, I'm out. And then what platform did you guys meet on? It yeah. was it, one that doesn't even exist anymore. It was okay. like, it's like, it was, it's like e-match or something like yeah, that. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't even like a real one that you'd hear of today. Jamie like, and Greg met on yeah. match. Oh, okay. Yeah. I so and I didn't know that. Yeah. So that we, I always say that we talk all the time about how we're, our, our relationships are so similar. That's yeah. so funny. I didn't know that. Yeah. And you know, most people are meeting on like dating apps and it's funny because like you, you ask people like how they meet and they like, they're like shameful. They're like, Oh, I think yeah. we met on an app. I'm like, that's amazing. Like nowadays <laughs> it happens all the time. Yeah. When Dan and I did it 17 years ago, it, it was, yeah. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Like people are like, you, you did what? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know why that's so taboo. But. Yeah. Cause I mean, I, again, I going back to then I was working in the modeling and bar industry and like, I wasn't meeting people. Like I, I'm like, we're I, not the type of people correct. that you're going to settle down. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to freaking date a bartender. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I did, but I'm not going to marry, settle down yeah, I'm not gonna marry a, with a bartender. I'm not going to stay in Vegas for the rest of my right. life. Like that's not what I want. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was cool. I had fun. It ran its course. Correct. I had fun. I had a great time in my twenties doing that whole stuff, but it's like, that's just not where you want to be when you get like, like you said, settled. Yeah. So. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah. And, I, and I dated a bunch of actors that were broke asses and fucking morons. So. And, yeah, like what? Well, when you say actors, like wannabe actors, like no, like actor actors. Oh, well, why were they broke? They're just not well. Their there's, money. there's, there's, there's there, there was both sides of that. There was both sides of that. So, okay. so the ones that were like established, messed up. Every one of them messed up in the head. The ones, the ones that were not established, messed up in the head and broke. <laughs> Which one's the lesser of the two people? Exactly. exactly. Again, it ran its course. Yeah. I was like, so that was actually another question that was on here. So we could, we could do that. So I was going to say that. What was the what was your worst um, dating experience ever? So I'll, I'll go into that first. That was an actor. It was an actor. But then I was on a I was on a set, and he was the lead actor of that particular show. And so he asked me out, and I was like, okay, because he's hot. I was like, okay, cool. He was the biggest moron I've ever met in my life. This is what we did for, you'll appreciate this. This is what we did for our first, our first date. NASCAR. Oh God. <laughs> he took me to a NASCAR race, which in and of itself, he took you to a NASCAR. That's a worst first date yes. ever. You can't talk like you're in the heat. <laughs> and we're with his friends. So like, this isn't a first no, date. It was not a first date. Listen, you're it was, candy it was on so arm. bad. We were, how did you get out of there? I, I couldn't until it was over. That was the whole thing. We all drove together and I'm stuck in the back seat of this thing. He sat in the front seat. I'm sitting in the back seat with his friends. Okay. We're at the NASCAR race. It's freezing. I didn't bring a jacket, nothing like that. Right. That's the worst. He's got one. Doesn't offer it to me. Ow. He gets up during the, during the race and goes to get like beer or whatever. Doesn't ask me if I want anything. I gets me nothing. I would have left. I was like, Mm-hmm. I was so mad. Even his friends. That's realized, awful. Even his friends were like, this this guy's a douchebag. Yeah. 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 This guy's a that is awful. Yeah. It was terrible. It was the worst day I've ever been in my life. Worst day I've ever been in my life. Mine is I I had my first love and then we were broken up for like two or three years and somehow we reconnected. And he asked me out. He was like, you know, uh, let's go out to dinner. Like, let's go out to back to our favorite spot, blah, blah, blah. So we, he had somehow hurt his foot and he literally was hopping on one foot. <laughs> like, did not have crutches. Like, he needed crutches, but he was literally, and he, he was a, a sandal guy. So he always wore like those reef sandals. Oh, no. And this, the, the, the sushi restaurant was that's, at a, that's a second floor. In it was on a second floor and there's no elevator. So we had to hop one step at a time up to the sushi restaurant. And I'm so embarrassed. I'm just like, I dated this guy. This was my first love. Like, and then we're sitting at dinner and we have nothing to talk about. Like I had grown so much of who I was and he was the same person. And I was just like, oh my 
God, I cannot get out of here fast enough. And I would have left if it wasn't him. You know what I mean? Like I owe him that respect and that dinner to like finish it off. And like at the end, he's like, I'm in love with you. Like, I want to get back together with you. Like, I want to do this fitness thing with you. Like I was getting really back into like fitness again. And I was starting at the exercise science program where I met Drew. And um, I was like, I don't think that we should date. (laughs) I don't think that's, I don't think it's going to happen. I I don't think that this is, this is, and he was like, really? awful it's I think it's even more awful saying that to someone that you like I I will always have love for right, him right. in my heart and that like I risk I respect but I was like this is really hard to hear <laughs> how are we on two separate pages right now like two completely different books you oh, know wow. it's hard it's hard to be that that um truthful and vulnerable to someone that you you care about and you yeah. respect but I was like I'm so embarrassed right now I my skin was I texted my dad and I was like how did you ever let me date this guy he's like I told you I told you back in the day yeah. you just never listened he was great just not a husband <laughs> not, my, not my husband <laughs> well you know there's a shoe for every foot that's so, it and he's married he's now wearing a with two beautiful kids and he's wearing a sandal and he still wears the reef sandals <laughs> that's a perfect place that, to end it oh my god that for me alone <laughs> that was good i'm not over that <laughs> there's a shoe for every foot for him it was a sandal <laughs> I love you. I'm sorry. That for me alone is a deal breaker. Just Sandals? Alone. Yes. I oh, know. Oh, God. Awful. Like, who? Yeah. No. Who, wear, <laughs> who wears those out? Well, you know why he liked them back in high school? Because they had the beer opener on the bottom. So he thought he was the cool guy. I was like, you want me to open your beer for you? Like, and I'm like, that's not cool. Like, it's what you do in high school. I know. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, we were, ch- I was in my, I was going into my third year of college and he was the same exact, he was two years older than me. I was going into my third year of college. So technically he didn't go to college, but he could have been, you know, like graduated. He's a fireman, um, graduated at that point, you know, and like, yeah. like, did not change from one day when wow. we broke up. Like it was crazy. It was wow. really, really crazy. And that's when I was like growth mindset, like really like that's like the time where I was like, I need to continue to change and grow and yeah. build because I don't want to be the same forever. Yeah, you know, yeah, I don't yeah. want to run into yeah. a friend from high school in 20 years, but like, oh my God, like she's still the same mindset. Well, okay. Hey, it, it worked for you. It did. It worked for you. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, yeah, I think that's a great place to end this podcast today. I put the gross mindset positive and positive vibes. And don't wear don't wear sandals. Men, don't wear don't wear sandals. Don't wear sandals. Yeah. Don't wear sandals. Period. Like you can wear them if you go to the pool. Like the pool. Like even Dan, so Dan has these slides. He has flip. You know, these little flippers. We call them slippers. But he wears socks with them. Like he doesn't even wear his bare. bare oh, feet. Drew does too. Yeah, bare feet on boys. No. Yeah. Just no. Yep. Yeah. It's just a no. Yeah. It's a no for me, dog. Yeah. It's a no for me, dog. <laughs> Go get your pedicures, guys. That's right. 100%. Uh, Gross. Anyway. All right. So. (laughs) Well, on that note. On that note. Season two, episode 54. 54. um, Like, comment, subscribe. Hopefully this was a fun one for you. So again, another one with really random topics, but I kind of like how these go. They like them. You know, we appreciate the comments. We saw all the comments from last last episode with the crazy questions. You guys like that stuff. So I figured we'd do this a little bit more often and just kind of have some fun with it. And if you guys have any crazy questions, send send them. them. Because we're going off this one list and we're almost done with it. Yeah, we just just Googled. (laughs) Yeah. So send us crazy questions. We'll answer them. Yes. Thank you guys so much for your support. Really appreciate it. And we will see you again back here next time for Behind the Bikini. We're out. Bye, guys. Bye. (laughs) Bye.